Good start. Oh, isn't it awesome? Oh, <laughs> Nasty fish. Oh, I know. They're just <clears throat> really aggressive. And they are just all? hammering the crawl. Oh, just drowning it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. My bobber was down. It's off. There you go. Okay. Oh, good man. There you go. Thank good you very good much. stuff. Yeah, right on. It looks Pretty good. Fish. Just a nice little one. That's actually a little one for, yeah. for around here. So. Yeah, well, it just shows you what a great system it is here. Right on. Good All stuff, right. Kel. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you again for, the for uh, getting for the this help. Uh, the bet. show going here. Hold on here, we'll. Uh, and doing the casting segments. Yeah, you got to show off the fly. Yeah, we'll show that. Little, uh, and why did you come up with this? This is Kelly's attractor chronomid. How did you come up with that? Well, I, I came up with this. Yeah, you'll get a good shot of it there, yeah. You can see it shining in the. Yeah. Right on. How'd you come up with that? Well, I just thought that, that we have attractor patterns for virtually every other type of insect that we imitate. And it just didn't make sense to me that, that, that this shouldn't be one of those as well. Rod Zavidek started tying these as well, too. Right. So I can't take total blame, claim for this, but we both started tying them, and, and this was a, this is a great pattern. Right on. And it's, uh, it's proven it's worth right now. Good stuff. So uh, let's go catch a couple more. Yeah. <laughs> and welcome to the bench. You know, when springtime comes around, my favorite pattern to use is a chronomid. I've got a really nice little chronomid to show you today. It's called the acetate chronomid, and it has a different type of material. It's acetate floss. If you do the right things with this fly, you can get that acetate to really harden up the body and really add a nice shine to the fly. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. We're going to tie the acetate chronomid on a Tamco TMC2487 size 14 scud pupil hook. And we're going to put a small glass bead near the eyelet to imitate an air bubble. We'll be using black thread, a dot, some white Fentex for the butt. We'll use some black acetate floss for the body. To segment the body, we'll use some small silver wire, some pheasant tail for the wing case, some peacock curl for the head. Then we'll dip the acetate floss in acetone to thin it, melt it, and form the body. So what I've done to start off the fly is I've already put my hook in the vise, then I have my small glass bead up near the eyelet of the hook, and now we're just going to tie in our 8 up black thread and make sure you cover the whole hook with the black thread and that way nothing slips right on your hook. I have a small little piece of my white Fentex. I'm going to put this on right at the very base, right at the bend of the hook. Pull it out, stretch it back, and this is actually going to imitate the small tail that chronomids have. We want to cut this so it's about just an eighth of an inch long. All we want is a small little butt section out the back. In preparation for the ribbing, I'm going to put on some fine silver wire. Some people call it a small French tinsel. And we'll just wrap that back, wrap it fully into the body right down to the butt, and we'll hold that back for ribbing later. For the body now, we're going to use some acetate floss. And this acetate floss is, is quite thick, and it's really fine material. It's kind of tough to work with. I like to use a bobbin. So what we're going to do is tie it in. Remember, chronomids have a very thin body, so try to keep it as thin as possible. And we'll tie that body right down to the butt section, and then bring our thread back up towards the eyelet. Now we're going to slowly wrap our acetate floss to form the body. And just keep wrapping it, keeping it nice and tight. You want to form a nice thin body. Remember, this floss is really tough to work with because it just falls apart. But keep that body thin, and keep wrapping. Now that the acetate body is tied in, we're going to take our ribbing we've had sitting back there. That's the uh, silver wire. And we're slowly going to segment the body, because chronomids do have a nice segmented body. It really doesn't matter how many turns you make, as long as the segments are fairly even. Now what I've done is whip finished off my fly just to get rid of the thread. We're going to take the fly out of the vise and get a pair of tweezers. And in a vial, I've added some acetone into this vial. And what we want to do is dip the fly, the acetate floss, right into that acetone to help dissolve it. What this is going to do is form a real nice, glossy body. 
You know, one thing to remember about acetone is it is a solvent or a thinner. It does give off fumes. Make sure you use it in a well-ventilated area. Now that we've got our, our body nice and glossy and formed with the acetate floss, we're going to tie our thread back on and prepare to put on the thorax in the head and the wing case. Now we have our thread tied back on to the head of the fly. We're going to take a few strands of our pheasant tail and tie it in and we'll form a wing case with this material later. I've taken one strand of my peacock curl, and we're going to tie this in and then form a nice head for the fly. And remember, keep the head fairly thin. You only want one strand of peacock curl because chronomids do have a, a very thin body and head. Take the pheasant tail that we tied in earlier to form the wing case, and now we'll pull it forward over our peacock curl and tie it off just behind the glass bead. Try not to get any material in front of that glass bead towards the eyelet. Keep everything behind the glass bead. The special thing about this fly is definitely the acetate floss. Once you dip that acetate floss in the acetone, it not only makes a very effective pattern, but a very durable one too.